Hi everyone, this is Dan and uh, this is jimshooter.com and the last part of the 198 storytelling lecture uh, by Jim Shooter. This will be my last video on it. I think at this point I've advertised his blog enough. Uh, if you want to, and I highly recommend going over all of his lectures uh, about storytelling. He also has quite a few interesting lectures on comic book creation and uh, publishing, which is uh, pretty cool. Anyhow, anyhow let's uh, get into this. The uh, 198 Storytelling Lecture Part 3, published way back in 2011. <sighs> Today, I'm going to show you how to make the Little Miss Muffet example from yesterday better, and the next week, I'll discuss some of the craft of being a writer. How can we make it better? We can add some character. Wouldn't it be interesting to get to know this little girl? All right, let's do that. Let's say Little Miss Muffet is a very lonely girl. She's eating lunch alone every day. So she's all alone sitting on her tuffet. She's miserable and she's a very lonely girl. We can infer from the story that she's probably afraid of spiders. So all of a sudden, Miss Little Miss Muffet starts coming alive to us. She's a lonely little girl who's scared of spiders. So she's having another lonely lunch and then along came the spider. Now the spider happens to be a lonely guy too. The guy is ugly. He's a spider. He can't get a date. So he sees Little Miss Muffet and he approaches her. Now every instinct in the spider's body is saying take a chunk out of this babe's leg, and yet he's lonely. He'd like to have a friend. On the other hand, this is a high-risk operation. What if she steps on him? Little Miss Muffet is like, gee, he's ugly, gee, I'm really lonely, and he seems nice. She waffles around about it for a while, and then finally she screams and runs away, proving that Little Miss Muffet is more afraid of spiders than she is afraid of being lonely. It's a better story. You learn something about her, you learn something about the spider, it's already better. So what Jim is trying to show here is that when you have like your characters, your setting, uh, the conflict and everything, but you as a writer, you have to kind of enrich the background, right? Who is the character? You know, what are her fears, her motivations? You know, what is uh, what what is kind of the, the driving motivator behind the actors in the play, right? And then also, what is kind of a lesson in here? What is the theme, right? Uh, we're, we're getting more in-depth into, like, literature kind of analysis, right? Uh, but anyway, getting into it. This is a really short article, by the way. Well, there's more you can do to a story. You can add jokes and a bit of business, uh, interesting little events that happen. Uh, in the case of, like, sci-fi or other stuff, you can add all kinds of science uh, you can build more suspense. You can actually have the spider creeping a little close to her on her tuffet. You can do a lot of things. You could add a car chase. <laughs> yeah, you could. Uh, so you could take that basic building block and that's where you start being creative. Uh, throw your creativity at this and come up with something really cool. Better still, you can make it relate to me, the reader. Let's face it. That's the kind of stories we like to read when, uh, when you can say, yeah, I felt that way. You could try to figure it out. Uh, you could try to figure out something that means something to whomever is reading it. Try to get that across. Uh, this is kind of like the the age old technique of the great writers, right? Which is being able to place themselves into other people's shoes. Uh, most importantly, the reader, right? And getting them to to care about a story and a character through empathy, through shared experiences, uh, through essentially humanity, right? of uh of people and of uh of the human race to a way to degree <laughs> not to be uh too ridiculous right uh the strength of of the really great writers you know like you know in the case of comics like uh chris claremont like uh frank miller like uh uh like blanking right now paul levitz uh you know all of the, the those great writers uh of the past is their ability to place themselves into other people's shoes and really get you to care about these characters. Why do I care about Wolverine? Uh, why do I care about Robin? Why do I care about Superman? You know, why do I care about Peter Parker, Spider-Man, right? Uh, all of us who have read comics, we kind of know why we care about them, but it's because we've been through all these stories and these experiences with these characters, Logan, Peter Parker, Clark Kent, Kent uh, Bruce Wayne, right? We've we've seen them go through these these struggles and these conflicts. Some of them, you know, would be things that we would never deal with, and some of them would be things that you know we might have actually had almost a one to one experience with these characters, right? So, 
uh, humanizing, right? And uh, as your boy Zach likes to say, humaning well, right? That's how you get people to uh, care about your writing and care about your characters and care about the story, right? The writing uh, in the case of comic books is in service to the story, right? Because it's a combination of the art and the writing that helps you get across uh, you know, the, the whole drama that you are engaging people in, right? Uh, books in, in the case of, uh, fiction, right? Like this really weird thing that we've been looking at for t three videos now. <laughs> in that case, it's a function of, uh, of, uh, how, how you, uh, use your words, right? And the structure and all that other stuff to get people drawn in. Uh, writing is like its own animal in and of itself, uh, but comic book writing is like a very interesting subset of it uh, that, I, that I personally think only a few people have really like truly understood uh, to a great level. Uh, I, I personally think Chris Claremont's one of them. Uh, but uh, anyway, yeah, that's a really quick one right here. Uh, if you want to, it goes into more. He goes into his uh, Huckleberry Finn lecture. Uh, if you go into the uh, table of contents into a storytelling lecture, uh, yeah, he goes, yeah, strange tales, lettering, structure, storytelling, rant, uh, continued inking rant. I, for, I forget which one of these, right? Oh, yeah, these are his question and answers that he does. It's a really good blog if you've never read it, by the way. Uh, artwork, it goes out. <laughs> he goes on like really long rants and a lot of inside ball uh, about Marvel Comics or Valiant or a lot of or his really, really early days. Because uh, those who don't know, like the history of Jim Shooter, uh, he started working comics like at 13. He was like writing stories for DC, which is kind of crazy. Uh, so very interesting guy. Yeah. Classic photo of him and the man Stan. Uh, what was his other one? He had like a great one. I forget. Uh, oh, he had one. Uh, all right, I gotta go find this real quick here. Uh, reminiscences and tributes. There we go. I think about Jack, Paul Levitt's finest scam, Bill Senkevich's Spider Man. That's actually a pretty funny story. It's actually, if you read 1980s uh, Marvel around the time Secret War came out, uh, the bullpen issue actually uh, captures this. It's uh, pretty funny. Uh, Airplane Ryan, blah, blah, blah. Hall of Famers. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, here we go. This article right here is great. And it's something that I think everybody should note. Uh, uh, was it Chris and uh, Jim didn't necessarily always get along, but uh, Jim recognizes what Chris did for the X-Men series. And it's pretty succinctly written right here. Uh, Chris Claremont has written many wonderful things. He's passionate about everything he writes, especially notable, of course, is his work on the X-Men. Chris gets a good deal of credit for the success of the X-Men, but not nearly as much as he deserves. I kind of agree with that. A lot of people throw around all the different artists that he worked with, and especially a lot of people in the early days give more credit to John Byrne, or in the, his latter days, more credit to uh, Mark Silvestri and Jim Lee. But at the end of the day, the heart of that run uh, was Chris Claremont's writing, tying it all together. One narrative, one story that lasted, you know, from the late 70s all the way to the early 90s. Not only did he do an outstanding job as a writer, uh, he built the team that built the team. He recruited artists when needed. He made sure the lettering and coloring were consistent in top drawer. He spent time, effort, and money out of his own pocket to ensure the quality of the book. He sweated the details. He fought like a wolverine to defend the integrity of his vision, his work, his words. If there's a Hall of Fame for caring, trying, and outworking everyone, he should be there too. Babe Ruth didn't create the Yankees, and Chris Claremont didn't create the X-Men, but each of them built the house. Couldn't agree more myself, personally. One of these days, I'll just do a video on Chris Claremont, because <laughs> it's almost worth going over. <laughs> I kind of have to do a little more research, though. <laughs> but anyway, uh, that's the video, guys. Uh, great uh, little piece here by uh, Jim Shooter. Uh, check out his blog. I've uh, left the link in all the videos below. Uh, if you like this video, please hit the thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't subscribed. Hit the bell for notifications. If you got any comments about this video, jimshooter.com, or uh, this uh, lecture by him, uh, leave it down below, and I will see you next time.